In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the one sample z test, our first hypothesis test, our first inferential statistic in this video series. We're also going to learn how to calculate the Cohen's d effect size that's associated with this test statistic. Now we haven't talked too much about effect sizes so far in this video series, but they're really important and prevalent, so I'll mention a few things now. In our next video, I'll really focus on the differences between hypothesis tests and effect sizes and why it's really useful to have both, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I'll just mention that we typically measure effect sizes using Cohen's D. There are other ways of measuring effect sizes out there, but this is the standard and the most common. So we have D sub Z. Notice that the subscript represents basically what test this effect size is associated for, because again, every single hypothesis test out there will have its own effect size. So D sub Z equals X bar minus mu, our sample mean minus our population mean. Notice the numerator is the same as it is in the actual hypothesis test. It's where the denominator changes. So in the denominator for an effect size, we just have a measure of variability and not standard error. So in this case, we have standard deviation. In this case, with the z-test, the actual hypothesis test, we have standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. So this is the key difference, and again, as I'll talk about in the next video, this makes all the difference. This completely changes how we interpret the hypothesis test versus the actual effect size. So we're going to get a number from this, and here's how you can interpret the number we get from the formula for the effect size. 0 to 0.2 represents a small effect, 0.2 to 0.5 represents a medium effect, and any value larger than 0.5 represents a large effect. And by the way, it works in the negative direction too. You might get negative effect sizes, it just depends on whether the sample mean is larger than your population mean, or if it's smaller than your population mean, but it's perfectly possible. So it works the same way. 0 to negative 0.2 will be considered a small effect, negative 0.2 to negative 0.5 is a medium effect, and anything larger but really smaller than, right, more negative than negative 0.5 would be a large effect. Okay, so let's do a sample study here. Let's say you're interested in meditation, and you want to know if five minutes of meditation can significantly reduce how worried people feel. So let's say that worry in the population, look at these population parameters, mu the population mean and sigma the population standard deviation. Let's say that worry in the population is uh, on average a 7 out of 10, that's how much people worry, and the standard deviation in the population is 2. So you want to test whether, again, 5 minutes of meditation can reduce this number. And to do this, you collect a sample of 15 people, you have them meditate for 5 minutes, and you ask them on a scale of 1 to 10 how worried they now feel. So in this case, because we have 15 different people, we're going to go ahead and write n equals 15. Uh, and notice, we already almost have everything we need for the entire formula for really both of these things, right? We already have the uh, population mean, mu, that's going to be 7. Population standard deviation, that's going to be 2. Our sample size is 15. These problems in reality are usually relatively easy. So really the only thing we need to actually calculate is x bar, the sample mean. To calculate the mean, you're of course going to add up all the x values and divide by how many values you're adding up. In this case, n, your sample size of 15. So I'll trust by now you know how to calculate a simple mean. So in this case, I'll tell you that our x bar, our sample mean, is going to be 5.73. So I'll go ahead and write that over here just so we have everything in one place. And now we're ready to solve the problem. So let's start with the actual hypothesis test. Here, z sub x bar is going to equal your sample mean that we just found, 5.73 minus your population mean that you're comparing against, 7, divided by your standard error. Don't make the mistake of putting standard deviation in your denominator, because in that case you would accidentally be calculating an effect size, which we'll do in a moment separately. So here you're going to take your standard deviation, 2, and you're going to divide by the square root of your sample size, 15. So if you put this in a calculator, you're going to go ahead and get a value of negative 2.45. So I'll go ahead and tell you that this would be significant. P would be less than 0.05, so you would say that you know there is a real effect here. There seems to be uh, a real effect. At least we have reasonable confidence to say that you know meditating for five minutes reduces how much people worry. But now let's do the effect size to see how large or small that effect is. So here, d sub, uh, excuse me, d sub z 
equals, again, same numerator, 5.73 minus 7 divided by just 2. You don't need to do the square root of 15. Just stick your standard deviation there in the denominator, and you're done. So in this case, our effect size will come out to negative 0.64. So look, this is considered a large effect. This is larger than uh, the absolute value of 0.5. Let's think about it that way. So here we have a significant effect, and that effect is large. And that's how you calculate a one-sample z-test and the effect size associated with that z-test.